And now the specimen is inside of the SEM and you can see, uh, still see the surface with the solder bumps and this uh, below here, uh, this is a silicon wafer. And on top of the uh, silicon wafer we have these um, semiconductor structures that we want to uh, investigate later in the TM. The soldier bumps look a little bit different compared to the previous image because it's a uh, different preparation of the specimen. Uh, but uh, it doesn't matter because we are not interested in the solder bumps. So um, this is now the scanning electron microscope. So I can easily change the magnification to see more smaller details. Or I even can shift the specimen a little bit and we are looking now for some area on the sample where the, the, the layer of the solder bombs is already removed. And here, we all, here you already can see some parts of the transistor uh, structures. Can you give us uh, a relation to what kind of magnification we are looking at currently? Yeah, so I first I'm going to increase the magnification and then we, now we have the scale bar here and the scale bar now says 100 micrometers and this is above the, the size of a human hair. So typically uh, human hairs have a diameter of 60 to 80 micrometers and you can see that the solder bands have the same diameter and all of these semiconductor structures are much smaller compared to the size of the human hair. Human hair. So I now increase the magnification and you can easily see that our structures now, now we go a little bit back. This is about the size of the human hair here, but these uh, semiconductor structures are a lot of smaller. But again, this structure is a top view, so we cannot yeah. see it from the side and to see yes. it from the side for a TM, we have to perform the cut first. Yes, so we will remove now some of the material so we are digging a hole into the sample and then we are looking at the cross-section surface and then we will see the depth layers uh, of the semiconductors. Then the next step we're going to try to analyze our semiconductor structures with the SEM. And for this purpose we're going to remove some of the material so that we can look at the semiconductor stru structures in the cross-section. And so in, I will now use the ion beam to remove material here. But unfortunately, the ion beam is not as well focused as it should be. And for this purpose, I'm going to deposit first some metal layer here. Uh, this will be a platinum deposition layer. And this will protect the surface of our specimen. And I just start here and we can have a look on it with the SEM. And so what is now happening, we, we have this area here and the ion beam is scanning along this area for several times and at the same time we have some gas molecules inside of the vacuum chamber and these gas molecules they contain platinum and the molecules are cracked and as you can see here by time we will have the deposition of platinum layer on top of the surface. So the grey bar we can see building up on the top left is yes. the platinum. This is the platinum protection layer. And in the, ne in the next step we will use the ion beam to remove material here just in front of this protection layer. Now this process is finished you can clearly see here this protection layer made of platinum. And in the next step, we're going to use the ion beam to remove material. And I will use another patterning here. I now change the application file from platinum deposition to removal of material. And this will be my area. I increase the ion beam current a little bit to make it faster. And now we are ready to start this process.
And what's happening now is that the iron beam is going along a line here and the line is slowly shifted forward. And by these, the material here is removed and all these semiconductor structures are released. And as you can see here, it's a very fast method to see these st structures, the depth uh, distribution of these structures. But unfortunately, the resolution is not high enough to resolve all these transistor st structures inside of our specimen. So that's why we will cut the small lamella out of the material and put it into a TEM. Yes. And I will just show you in a quick presentation how this lamella is removed out of the material and then put into the TEM. Okay, so what can we see on the top left image in this presentation? Yeah, this is the surface of the uh, specimen and we now want to cut a TEM lamella that is perpendicular to the surface of the uh, specimen. And the first step is the same again as we saw before. We have a platinum uh, protection layer that is deposited on top of the surface. And in the next step, we remove the material on both sides of these stem lamella. This is just done by the iron beam, as we saw before. But now we have two areas, not, not only one. This is a little bit uh, rotated view. and. Now we want to release this, this stem lamella and you have to keep in mind here the, the scale bar. This is now one, uh, 10 micrometers, uh, so this is one fifth of the thickness of the human hair. So it's very small, so we can't use tweezers or anything else, mechanical tools to bring it to the stem for the analysis. Therefore we have this, this transfer needle. and. Uh, first, we start to cut a U-shape into the specimen to release it from uh, the TEM lamella from the specimen. And now we will fix the transfer needle on top of the TEM lamella. This is just done with the platinum deposition, as you saw before. And now we re release the TEM lamella to in, we cut it on both sides. And then this transfer needle, it's driven with piezo actuators and with this we can release the TEM lamella now. You can see that we slowly move it and now it's completely re released. Of course we can't transfer this needle to the TEM so we need another transfer holder and this transfer holder is seen here. So this is uh, some structure that has a size of three millimeters that perfectly fits to the TEM holder and here on top you see the transfer needle and there we have the small TEM lamella. So this is now another magnification. And now we want to attach the TEM lamella to this transfer grid here. And this is done here. We fix it again with the platinum deposition. Now we re release the transfer needle and the TEM lamella is, is now completely uh, fixed to the transfer holder. In the next step, we use the iron beam again to thin, further thin the TEM lamella to make it transparent for the electrons. So what kind of thickness do we have here final? So the final thickness we have now is 100 nanometers. So if you now later want to go to, to atomic resolution, of course we need rather thinner uh, specimen. So it depends on the application, how thin we will make it now. And you said before it's about a thousand times thinner than a piece of paper, sheet yes, of paper. Yes. Yeah. In our case, we have the specimen mounted uh, with the platinum um, on the sample on the side. You can see the structure of the 9900K here and it's thinned out again by the ion beam um, to make it uh, suitable for the TEM. And that's what we will take a look at now. The lamella is now placed inside the small sample holder which we have next to me on the table. It's placed right in front here it's so small that you cannot see it with your, um, with your eye. Um, there is a small mechanism on the end which allows the sample holder to be moved in those directions. Um, we can see that if we move to the screen over there. This element or the table in the middle can be rotated over this axis, over the mechanism, uh, mechanism which is sitting on the left. The sample is right here and you cannot really see it. It looks like a small piece of dust. And even now you would think that this is a small spot in, on your screen, but it's not. 
this tiny piece, this tiny element, that's the sample which we will look at at the TEM now. Quick voice over at this point because we were simply not able to shoot this part of the video twice. I'm holding the sample holder in my hand right now, ready to put it inside the TEM and I'm really amazed by the price of the sample holder because from the looks it looked like it's like 50 euro but then turns out it's 50,000 euro rather and you can see in the middle there's a small o-ring which is sealing off the TEM from the outside so the part on the left is outside of the vacuum and the part on the right is inside the vacuum. They have multiple different sample holders for the TEM depending what kind of sample you want to take a look at, if it's fluid or if it's a solid piece like uh, the 9900K we are going to look at now inserting it very carefully inside the TEM.